Go for it. Friggin' what up, dude? Um, it's Trader Wilson, and I'm the host of this podcast that's mine. It's gonna be called History is Nice. History is Friggin' what up, dude? Fired up to be on another ep of History is Dank, dude. Aaron on the sticks, dude. What up, Aaron? What up? Dude, just freaking chilling. Just got back from Vegas, dude. Sin City, dude. What up, dude? Wow. What happens in Vegas does not stay in Vegas because I'm going to be sharing it on the pod, dude. Cruised out with JT, dude. My dog. Freaking the Friday beers, bros, dude. DJ Press play, dude. I was on the plane, dude. Somebody's like, oh, yeah, I'm going out for a conference, dude. Conferences are back. I was like, dude, I'm going out to see a DJ. What up? Yeah, dude, I'm going to have a conference with me and my boys chucking some brewskis on the D floor, dude. Getting it done, dude. That's how the conference, you know what I mean? It's called the freaking war room, dude. Yeah, dude, if war stands for freaking straight up the worm, I don't know, dude, some move that's sick. You ever do the worm, dude? I'm not built for the worm. Few are. I'd be, Few like, are. I'd be more of a caterpillar at, at best. That's still sick. Yeah. It's still style. Yeah. You got to have style, dancing style. It's fun, dude. Just bobbing, dude, just getting after it. My dank ass fiance was in there, so I didn't do any freak dancing, but I saw a lot of bros doing some freak dancing. It was also a pool party. Freak dancing in a bathing suit, dude, legit. But you know, if you've gone in the pool first, chafing. Ooh, yeah. Got to be careful of that. Got to be very careful of that, dude. So it was just a fire experience, dude. Lay down a few parlays, watch the fights, dude. Made a little dough on Adesanya, dude, and Edwards, dude. What up, dude? And just having fun, dude, cruising around. JT and I put on dinner coats, dude. Never done that before. Put on a dinner coat, cruised around. And honestly, we're at the blackjack tables. JT was doing well. I was, I was not doing well, dude. My, bu- my buzz was betting for me, dude, and that's not a good move. At the tables, daddy was down. I'm daddy. And then these gentlemen who had players' cards rolled up, both put down a G, good dudes, and they're like, they're like, dude, my friends, we're going to make some money right now, my friends. And I was like, dude, my legends, let's go. Dude, this sounds dank. Uh, then the dealer proceeded to get three 21s in a row. Jesus. And one of them was a blackjack. Ugh. Yeah. Then we stood up from the tables. After that, dude, and went out and freaking clubbing, dude, and hit excess. Dude, dude, when DJs use pyrotechnics, it's tight. DJs, they bring it, dude. JT said it right, dude. Everyone thinks that they can be the DJ. You know, dude? Put your hands over your dome on the night you don't want to, dude. It's a good quote from my dog JT, dude, you know? Bring that energy. Get people going, dude. It's a great lifestyle. Although I, lo- I love catching my Z's, dude. As soon as we get to a nightclub, we're at this one nightclub called uh, Disco Pussy. And oh. as soon as I got there, it was tight. As soon as I got there, I was like, I'm exhausted. I got to go, dude. Got night, one of those nice little cabs. This was on Old Vegas, dude, on Fremont Street. Never been there before. Stayed at this t- place, the Circa. Legit, dude. Stadium swim. Legit, dude. And Fremont Street was dope, dude. It's like being in a small town with like a, of course, a heavy influx of the Vegas flavor. Your casinos and such. And, you know, it does have clubs. But people are just kind of chilling, dude. You'll be walking, pop a conversation. Just is good. Dude, the firemen were posting up, just taking pictures with people hanging out. Dude, it was amazing. Everyone was just chilling, having a nice time. It had like a very, had a small town feel, but obviously with the, uh, you know, Vegas infrastructure, dude. So it was sick, dude. And in fact, that's exactly um, what inspired um, this week's friggin' dank topic, which is going to be Vegas, baby, the history of Vegas, baby. But before we get into that, dude, I just want to let you know, dude, we got a friggin' dank sponsor, dude. Keep Athletics, dude. This episode is brought to you by Keep Athletics. Dude, if you ever had a phone slip out of your pocket, dude, it's unchill, dude. You panic. You get that that sinking feeling in your stomach and you go, dude, where's my, my lifeline, dude? My phone, dude. What my fiance is like, don't forget to pick up bananas from the G store right now, dude. I would not get that message and we would not be potassium up, dude. So... Just clutch to have those pockets that keep everything in there, dude. Honestly, I'm not going to lie, dude. I was wearing them to the pool part. I didn't hop in the pool. I just let my feet dangle a little bit. And uh, But honestly, I felt so safe with the Keep Athletic shorts. I would be like, dude, I would jump in there uh, with my phone. It, you know, They wouldn't keep your phone safe, you know. but um, my phone would not fall out even if I was in water, dude. So it was tight, dude. I, I was fired up on that. Had my keys in there and had a few little chips in there, too. Didn't lose those chips either, which felt nice, dude. Kept those nice and safe in my Keep Athletic shorts, dude. So that was sick, dude. So... 
Uh, treat yourself, dude. Listeners get a sweet deal. Go to keepathletics.com slash dank15 to get 15% off your first order. That's spelled K-E-A-P, keepathletics.com slash dank15 for 15% off your first order. <laughs> treat yourself, dude. Wear them everywhere. I wore, I wore them on the plane, dude. It's amazing. Headphones, everything in there. Keys, legit. All right, dude. Going to get into the history of Vegas, dude. Um, Oh, by the way, dude, before I hop into that real quick, um, check out the new series on YouTube, uh, 15 with Osteen. It's just uh, it's Joel Osteen doing um, lifts. You know, he's an evangelist. He takes care of your spirit, but now he's taking care of your body, dude. You know, your body's a temple, dude, and pencil, temples are built with rock, so time to put on about, you know, 10 pounds of rock to recruit those fibers. So just cruise to 15 with Osteen or, you know, on, on YouTube or Instagram, whatever, dude. Um, all right, dude. Vegas, bro. Vegas. It's a city rooted in history. I mean, if you look at the beautiful, glamorous casino hotels, mega resorts, which we'll get into, that's the era of Vegas that we're in now, but first we got to go into the past, but it's a city of history. You know, they draw on aesthetic cues from ancient Rome, Egypt, Paris, Venice, New York. It's just a dank-ass place. You know, it has the old western frontier vibe. In fact, that's what helped Vegas thrive, you know, in the 30s it's a city uh you know tailored around infrastructure they're putting in the dam the hoover dam um workers needed a place to unwind they'd cruise over to fremont street and you know they'd get themselves prostitutes gamble drink beers you know nefarious activities but you know they're out there using their hands and then they want to use their dongs and it's you know it's life vegas gets right to it dude get right to it you go to a nightclub nowadays i was telling jt about this a nightclub it lets you know exactly where you stand in society. You know, do you have the money to get the table? What, what's your outfit look like? Everyone's kind of doing their best. Kind of, you know, you either got to embrace it or you, or you hate it. I understand why it's it's there's a disparity, but you kind of know where you stand, and we can hide. It's kind of like maxing out at the gym. Sometimes you don't want to max out because you're like, oh, yeah, I can probably get 225 10 times, but you haven't tried it. You're just telling yourself you can. You can probably maybe only do it three. You go to the nightclub, put your shoes on. You've got to wait in that line. It can be a bad experience, but get in there. Then get on the dance floor and freak. It's going to be beautiful. There are going to be pyrotechnics. Everyone's going to scream. Get your buzz on. Although they do charge you 18 bucks for a beer, which is absurd. Anyway, dude, back to freaking old Vegas, bro. Not just a beer, but light. Oh, 100%. I was drinking a Michelob Ultra, dude. I was like, does this come with a set of rollerblades, bro? Better, dude. Because yeah, at certain prices, I always say... Uh, are they giving away free blowjobs with this? Or Yeah, exactly, dude. Like it's, it's gouging, dude. Yeah. It's unethical, dude. I think it's unethical. I'm trying to party, dude. They're they're depleting that, dude. You're, you're throwing a party and doing that? It's unchill, dude. Also, anytime I see a, a long line to get in somewhere, I say, are they giving away free, free blowjobs in there? Yeah. Nothing attracts a line like a line, though, dude. People want to be part of something, dude. I get it. Mm-hmm. That's why you go to, to Old Vegas, dude. Cruise over to Fremont Street. It's tight, dude. And, you know, the city was founded on with ranchers, railroad workers, dude. You know, the dam workers, like I mentioned, dude. It has the Old West vibes, dude. Um, you know, in the 1940s is when we get into, like, the Vegas, you know, that, that will the bulk of the episode will be about, of the, you know, the racketeering and the mob. You know, the movie Casino, you know, your Jimmy Hoffa references and uh, the Irishman, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, you, first you got to start, dude. I mean, let's go way back, bro. Canyon petroglyphs, dude, which are just freaking straight up rock paintings and pictures from um you know ancient peoples around 8700 dude the paiute tribe was in the area um but the, uh, the petroglyphs are 10,000 years ago so those are the true ancient people but the paiute tribe around 8700 dude europeans enter the valley dude uh, this dude rafael rivera dude he's scouting there for a freaking um you know set up a trade route the old spanish trail between new mexico and california dude and he sees that new mexico actually or las vegas has like some um springs underground and so he saw the meadows, and he called it Las Vegas, which means the meadows, dude. Huh. So that's sick, right? Didn't know that. Yeah. Um, then, you know, this was under uh, Mexican government rule until 48. Then in 18, 1848, that is, then 1855, shifts over to United States rule. Brigham Young sends a group of Mormon settlers in the area. Settlement was unsuccessful, abandons the fort. Um this fort then becomes called Los Vegas Ranchero, altered spelling instead of Las Vegas because that was a place in New Mexico, so it changed names for a while. Um, 1905, um, the San Pedro, Los Angeles, and Salt Lake Railroad arrived in Las Vegas, connecting the city with the Pacific and the country's main rail networks, dude. So 
like I mentioned, the city built on and around infrastructure. Um, dam is not constructed yet at this point. The future of downtown was uh, platted and auctioned by railroad company backers, and Las Vegas was incorporated in 1911. That's when it became a straight-up city, dude. Now, gambling was actually outlawed in 1910 in Nevada. Uh, but, you know, they had speakeasies, illicit casinos going on in the friggin' underground, dude. Um, and then in 31, organized crime uh, is when gambling was legalized there, and organized crime already had its roots because it was a crime to do these things, so they were basically set up for it, right? Then they get the green light from, from the gov, dude. Like I mentioned, 31, construction begins on a massive Boulder Dam, which is actually the Hoover Dam, after the president. Um, and... Uh, Freaking, basically, this is bringing power to the city. The main, um, Fremont Street was like the main street in Vegas uh, at the time where I was just partying, taking a nice little pedal taxi with JT, very romantic cruise down the strip. Excuse me, I shouldn't say the strip, Fremont Street. The strip is later established um, by the mob. Um, but this is in 1936, and it was called the Glitter Gulch because of all the neon lights. Dude, I cruised over to a friend's apartment when we were there, and they have like a giant neon sign that just shines into their apartment all the time, dude. Oof. Building next door. It's a nice ass apartment, dude. I mean, they, you know, living expenses are, are lower there. And I mean, they're right there on like Fremont. So a cool ass area. But I'm like, nah, dude, couldn't do that, dude. I need some quiet, dude, you know? Yeah, it's like that episode of Seinfeld with the Kenny Rogers roasters. I haven't seen that. Oh, <laughs> it's, it shines this red light in it, Kramer's apartment. Oh, it drives him mad. You did, I bet, bro. It's it's it would be menacing, bro. So freaking gnarly, dude. So, I mean, there's your basic breakdown, broad breakdown of how Vegas is established, right? Infrastructure, dude, connecting the east with the west. It's a huge port. You know, it has some water wells there, so it makes sense that people would put you know civilizations back then in ancient days, and it's sort of springing up around natural resources, and then you know, it's sort of this. Wild West. It's like this last. You, you hear about the Wild West. It's gunslingers. You know, you got saloons. You got uh, bordellos. You got gambling. Uh, you got drinking, and it's sort of like this last Wild West. And obviously now it's done out, like I mentioned earlier, with the mega resorts. But even the first strip in 1941, the El Rancho, Rancho Vegas Resort opened on the section of the U.S. 91, just outside the city's jurisdiction. So just past. Um, Fremont. So this is now the first hotel built on a section of highway that's called The Strip, baby. And they were sort of playing on, like I mentioned, the city of history, drawing aesthetic cues from Rome, Egypt, Venice, freaking New York, more modernly New York. But this one is, is playing on the Wild West, right? So it's in 41, it's like, look, you come here. It's like sort of Westworld type shit. You get it. Like Westworld is basically Vegas on steroids, you know? You go there and kill robots and bone robots, dude. Would you bone a robot, Aaron? I mean, it depends on uh, how well replicated, I guess. That's right. I like that, dude. I would bone a robot, dude. I would bone a robot, you know? I think it'd be tight. Do they look like Evan Rachel Wood? They, yeah, you can probably get one okay. that looks like Evan Rachel Wood. It might be strange, like, yeah, it would have to be, like, based on someone, or maybe you have an artist, like, sort of like that movie Antitrust, like... Or not antitrust. What's the other one with um, Oscar Isaac and um, the new girl from Tomb Raider, Vikander? Oh, um, uh, and Dom Wall Gleason. Deus, uh, Deus Ex Machina. Yeah, Ex Machina. Yeah. And it's like um, Oscar Isaac designs that robot based on freaking um, what's his name's uh, Gleason's Dom porno Gleason. profile. Yeah. Genius. Like they could probably make robots like that in Vegas, dude. You even just go up and slow. I guarantee you that's what's going to be happening soon, dude. I mean, it's definitely not cheating. No, it's a machine, dude. Yeah. You Built know? for one thing. Yeah. Pleasure. Pleasure machine, dude. And then, you know, I mean, it's nice. I don't, I don't shame sex workers, dude. Do it. Get after it. You know, it just sucks that there's so many shady people around that, that take advantage. You know, it's just uh, riddled with that. But, you know, I'm fired up. I love robots, dude. Fired up, dude. Um, I'd go hate, down on hate, a robot. Hate to be the guy uh, who's with a sex robot the one time it malfunctions. Yeah. Goes like super strength on you. Rips yeah. your dong off. Pfft, good luck. Good luck, dude. Put you in a bone coma, dude. <laughs> Later, dude. 
<laughs> um, all right, dude. So you got the strip aesthetic, Wild West frontier style. You know, um, then you got this dude coming in here in 1946. There's obviously a post World War II boom. Everyone comes back from the war. You know, you got the boomer generation, obviously, but a lot of babies were getting made in the strip. Baby, tell you that much right now. Um, then you got this dude, Bugsy Siegel. So business is good, dude. And then Bugsy Siegel, he's backed by um, East Coast mobster Meyer Lansky and Mexican drug money. They opened the Flamingo, dude. And the Flamingo is based on like Hollywood glitz and glam. I've actually stayed there before. And uh, there were shoe prints on the ceiling, dude. Someone was partying hard in that room before we got in there. It's gnarly, dude. Smelt like herb, dude, when I got in there, dude. Made some Bloody Marys, told myself I was going to take it easy that night, dude. You know, just have one drink. Went out till about 4 a.m., dude. This was back in my better Vegas heydays, dude. And you got some more affordable tables over there, you know. It's nice, dude. You can do like a 10 or 5 table minimum later in the night or early in the morning, depending on how you look at it. Legit, dude. By the way, I think I've been to Vegas. I think this was my Baskin-Robbins trip, my 31st time that I just went on, by the way, Aaron. Wow. Yeah, dude. Flamingo opened on Christmas Day. Tons of celebrities cruise in there, dude. Glitz and glam, bro. Um, and Seagull's basically just, you know, skimming the books. Anything where there's gambling, cash business, taking stuff off the side, sending it back to the mobsters on the East Coast, dude. Meyer Lansky and his crew, dude. Um, and then Siegel probably was wetting his own beak, and he gets murdered in 1947. He's shot to death in his girlfriend's Beverly Hills home. Riddled with bullets, dude. You can look online at the photos. I mean, they're old-time photos, but dude gets shot up like Sunny style in The Godfather, dude. Gnarls Barkley, dude. That's how they do it. Yeah, dude. And Siegel, you know, he gets hired up. He was a hitman himself, trusted associate of Charles. Um, Lucky Luciano. Um, and he's a New York mafia guy. They finance the Flamingo together. Um, you know, Meyer Lansky already mentioned him. Anyway, he goes how, down. How old was he when it happened? Spiegel. Or, or what, Siegel? I keep saying Spiegel. Bugsy Siegel. By the way, your name's Bugsy Siegel, dude. I mean, look out, bro. L let me look out how old he was. Because I'm just thinking about Warren Beatty played him in the movie Bugsy, and it's like... 41. Yeah, Warren Beatty was probably 16 when he played him. Dude, didn't Warren Beatty think, or no, who was the guy in Boogie Nights? It was... Um, Burt Reynolds? I think I think they were going to ask Warren Beatty to play Burt Reynolds' role, but, Burt, but Warren Beatty thought he was going to play Mark Wahlberg's role. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious, dude. Yeah, bro. So he basically takes his knowledge, Bugsy Siegel, of how to run the casino back with mob money and... You know, we mentioned there was crime going on, like illicit casinos and underground gambling and speakeasy stuff, but not at the scale of running like a resort like that and having to actually do the legit business and make it look legit. So it was sort of this like perfect recipe for dudes who had some financial knowledge and were, you know, had no business ethics. And I mean, obviously Bugsy Siegel was a hitman, so, you know, you know he's down. And basically to rip each other off and, and just sort of, be centered around crime and, you know, wa watch the movie Casino, dude. That's probably a great... But Casino's not referencing Siegel's character. He's referencing another character coming up in a bit here. Uh, but Siegel sort of sets the framework of, like, this is how Mafia does Vegas, right? They've got the money. Then you get, after uh, Siegel's time, a little bit later, you get this um, Tennessee senator, um, Kefauver, dude. He, you know, he wants to make a name for himself. He's going to go after... Um, Vegas and the mafia and organized crime and he wants to just set up a series of raids there. The governor of Nevada ends up being like, look, that's a bad look. I don't know how he convinces him. Um, oh no, that's, that's later with Kennedy, but he televises these hearings with the mobster guys. But the thing is they were relying on people to flip and turn and give up people's names but people were more afraid of the mafia than they were of the federal government. They're like, look, you guys might put me in jail or give me a little bit of time but these guys will literally kill me. Look what just happened to the main <laughs> dude out here. Yeah. Just got mowed down. Tommy gunned to death. Yeah. So no thanks, dude. There's money to be made, but look, baby, uh, you know, fear is a, uh, a heavy weapon here. And, you know, the government is not wielding the biggest bat, baby. It's the mob at this time. Um, so gambling can still continue to grow. And they say there's this like Vegas uh, researcher, um, professor at uh, david schwartz he's like those hearings 
basically tied the mob to Vegas forever because they were televised later on. So, you know, Siegel was killed and Bugsy was killed in 47. So, you know, TV, this was probably in the 50s and 60s this was going on. Yeah, TV's, TV was invented in 47. Yeah, exactly. And so that wasn't uh, the case. But um, later on, those televised hearings are, are going on. And, uh, you know, you've got, uh, then you got like Teamsters like Jimmy Hoffa. He's stepping in to back people and they're buying casinos. They have this Flamingo model and that's sort of the model. You get stuff like the Sahara. You get uh, casinos like the the Sands. Um, Dunes. Dunes, yep. Another great Vegas one is uh, movie is The Cooler. Real quick, best Vegas movie, go. Best movie in Vegas? Or about in or about around Vegas. I mean, it could be Swingers. I'd take that. You worked on Swingers. That's up there. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I mean, you got Casino. Fear and Loathing. Dark but good. Yeah, dark dark but good. The Cooler's great. Cooler's great. I mean, the, the first Ocean's Eleven's really good. Very true. Very true. So slick. Very true. I honestly like Vegas Vacation, dude. I like that movie. Yeah, it's got its moments. National, yeah, exactly. It's it's not amazing, but, it, but I enjoyed it. Um, new series on HBO, Hacks, centered in Vegas, pretty good. Oh, I got to watch Smart. that, yeah. I like it. I liked it. At first, I hated it, but then it grew on me. The show Las Vegas is not good. Nah, I never saw that. I'm, thi- I think, I think there's I'm thinking of the one, there's one, there was one set in the 40s with Michael Chiklis that I'm thinking of. That was not good. I thought I might like that, but no. And then there's the one with James Caan. That's set in modern day. Is that where he's... What's the one with James Caan where he's heisting? Doesn't he go to a casino and... Oh, no, he like... Where he like... He's like a welder. Uh, no. And he goes to work for the mafia. Oh, it's, a, it's a pretty good one. Um, I mean, he might go to Vegas. No, I don't think he's in Vegas in that. I think it's in Chicago. Um, anyway, dude. You get, oh, the Hangover. Oh yeah, the, I knew there was one. There was like one we're just not yeah, thinking of. That's, that's gonna be, be a major. I mean, that's one, a huge one. That one might be the one that made the most money. It's yeah, franchised, probably. Uh, uh, leaving Las Vegas, but it's got to be a Casino. It's got to be a Casino. I, I'm, I'm not a big Scorsese guy. Really? Oh, see, I love Casino. It's so freaking dank, dude. I don't love the mob. I just Mars I, Attacks, big never, Vegas element. I never really think anything great about the mob. It's, it's not my scene. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, there's a whole, like, mob museum, which I'll get into in a little bit down there. But, yeah, it's 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 interesting, but I don't love it. You get a great great character names, dude. Yeah. You know, Bugsy, Ballots. Johnny Bats. Johnny Bats. Yeah, you get all these guys. It's so good. Spider. Uh, spider, dude. <laughs> Dude. So skipping ahead a little bit of time here. Kennedy gets elected. We're in the 60s now, right? And this is coming out of those televised hearings and everything taking place during those times as well. And <clears throat> Bobby Kennedy believes gambling is the lifeblood of organized crime. So he wants to go in big against it. Okay. And this is when, um, this is when um, the governor, I mentioned earlier mistakenly, the governor, Grant Sawyer, persuades Kennedy to hold off on the raids. It's going to be a bad PR look. How did he do that? Don't know. Maybe he gave him a little bit of table money, you know, staked him at the freaking uh, uh, Players Club or something like that. Anyway, the uh, government does do secret wiretapping at casinos to get information of mob stuff. They do raids in different some different cities, but uh, like Kansas City, you know, Chicago, New York. Um, but, you know, Bobby's doing this, uh, Kennedy's doing this anti-mob campaign. Um, Teamster money, this is Jimmy Hoffa. Um, you know, he uses union pension funds, invests it in the casinos to make money. Um, and under, like, the, there's this, like, investor, uh, visionary Jay Serrano, S- Jay Sarno. Um, he opens uh, Circus Circus. So, basically, the law enforcement strategy... Uh, was flawed. They said they thought, and I mentioned this earlier, they thought, thought people would flip, you know, once they had the info on them and stuff, but they wouldn't, dude. No one's flipping. Um, then in 1969, um, Nevada legislature passes a law. They finally go, look, dude, we got to get some rules here. And you'd think it'd be, and later they have this thing called the RICO Act, which is the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organization Act. 
which enables like more direct um, seizures and raids and stuff on the strip. But this first law, probably more importantly, is a piece of legislature in Nevada state law that eases the way for corporations to own casinos. And basically, they want to do this because all the money to put on these things, and it's sort of a boys club, and the mob is running it. And if a corporation wants to get in, they're going to be like, no, you're an outsider. We're not going to approve your stuff. You're done. We'll bully you out, blah, blah, blah. But now these laws make it a little bit easier um, to, you know, get loan approval or, you know, uh, who actually owns the land, the state, to buy something a little bit farther down the strip. Um, you know, maybe a, an outside, maybe you wouldn't have to be, ordinarily you'd have to be like franchised and set up in Nevada. Now you can set up, you know, you can be a corporation centered in California or New York, which basically like the mobs were, but now you can be a legitimate corporation. Like for instance, say like, uh, you know, Disney wants to buy it for some reason. The mouse wants to go to the strip, which would be hilarious. Like Walt could do that with his company set up in Anaheim. Um, and in fact, it is kind of a Hollywood guy who first does make the move out in Vegas, but maybe not the exact person you're guessing because he's, he's beyond Hollywood. He's bigger than that. Um, so then in 71, dude, Chicago mob sent Anthony Spilotro to Las Vegas to take over loan sharking and other street rackets for Marshall Cafano and one of, the reg, uh, one of the 11 original Black Book members. A Black Book member was like a person who wasn't allowed, it, this is the government making this, to like... Uh, step into casinos like or do anything like that like a, a rest on spot keep an eye on this guy they're wiretapped they're done so mob notices that all right we need to replace this guy and spilotro is like the main dude who really um gets things going to the next level and like takes vegas to its heyday in the 70s you know when you think of all these movies um going on you know uh, you think of uh that he's got guys named like frank lefty rosenthal you know he's the odds maker dude uh, he, he's in charge of the skimming operations at the Stardust and on Fremont Casinos, which are the uh, old Vegas. Um, basically, he takes money to Chicago, Kansas City, Milwaukee, Cleveland, right under the noses of Nevada gaming regulators, dude. Um, they pull on this dude from San Diego, a businessman, Alan R. Glick. All right. He's uh, basically a licensed front man. But he secretly answers, so he looks good for the Nevada Gaming Commission and the RICO Act. So they're basically the mobs having to reinvent themselves a little bit here, get a little more trickery here, a little more tomfoolery here, you know what I'm saying? Sorry, I want to talk about Vegas. I kind of got to talk like this, a little bit of a mob voice, you know what I mean? Spilotro, you know, he's a totally good dude, you know. Spilotro is a good guy, you know. And they trust him, you know. He started as an enforcer and a hitman. Look, he ran Vegas Rackets before that. Uh, he basically ran his stuff. The main guy who was like basically running the strip, it's gold. He runs his, his operation out of a gift shop at the Circus Circus Hotel. <laughs> so he's just down there and he's like the whole guy who runs everything, sneaking money, you know, get, getting stuff to the mob, making, you know, hand over fist, all uh, under the table untaxed. And he's just sitting, like if you were a tourist and you walked in there, like you'd just walk into his gift shop and he'd like sell you something for five bucks. Hilarious. Um, then he, he gets busted there, though. He has to go to the Gold Rush Jewelry Store on uh, West Sahara Avenue near the Strip. And, um, yeah, he, he helps one of his buddies. Um, he's a top lieutenant from uh, one of the mafias. Childhood friend, dude. Herbie, uh, Fat Herbie Blitzstein, dude. Amazing, dude. Fat Herbie's his name. You got guys like Lefty, Fat Herbie, Spilotro. It's amazing. And this is kind of where the casino script is in play, or is like in this era. Um and in fact, like these guys do a great job staying out of Vegas. Oscar Goodman's their attorney who keeps them out, dude. He's dude called the mouthpiece. He's a slick talker, silver tongued dude. Get them out of there. These are some of the televised hearings that everyone's seeing that I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, basically, finally though, they get a dude, Frank Colota, um, was arrested with five others in a burglary. Oh, they run a burglary thing called the hole in the wall gang because they'd really drill a, a hole in your freaking wall and then steal your stuff that way because they would steal jewelry and everything. Um, so basically they had it all going on, dude. Just di basically jacking everything. And then, uh, but Spilotro is found, killed uh, with a business partner of his and he's battered and buried in a cornfield. So that's that death scene in uh, Casino is based on that. Um, and then his buddy, uh, Blitzstein, he gets killed later. Um, Goodman becomes elected mayor. He goes to jail, but then gets out of jail and gets elected mayor of Las Vegas, um, held the office for 12 years. 
and then he's the one who creates the mob museum and then he also started tours to show you where all the old hangouts were so people are they love this stuff they're obsessed obsessed with it I'm sure some listeners will know way more this is basically a very broad breakdown of 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 what's going on um and i mean that's basically get you right up to it but i want to take you to um a little bit more modern steps in Vegas. But before we do that, once again, I want to remind you we are brought to you by Keep Athletics. That's K-E-A-P, Keep Athletics, dude. Keep stuff in your pockets, your chips if you're gambling, dude, your piece if you're a mobster, hip man, dude, whatever you need, your phone especially, dude. You could go on that frick. If you're in Vegas, you go on that New York, New York roller coaster, you get upside down, you get inverted, dude. If I'm wearing Keep Athletics, I got no issues, dude. I got my stuff staying in my pockets, dude. Everything that I need in there, dude. You know what I mean, dude? If I want to get into like, um, you know, packing lips, dude, when dudes do that, there's you know, you ever have those friends like on football teams or baseball players, dude, just put my skull in there if I need to, dude, whatever I've got to have in there, dude, put them in my keep athletic shorts, my car keys, dude, valet, dude, my fat stack of tippies, dude, just wish I could park whips and score fat tips and keep athletic shorts, dude, be so tight, dude, I'm wearing them all the time, dude, I love them, they're comfortable, dude, they keep me cool, dude, breathable, dude, eco-friendly materials, bro, things legit, dude, I'm just fired up to wear these puppies all around town, dude. Honestly, dude, I mentioned I'm engaged now, dude. I would love to get freaking Mary Toes in the sand wearing some keeps, dude. Make sure my best man's wearing one just didn't drop the ring, dude. You know what I'm saying, dude? And go out raging, dude. Honestly, do the worm freaking break dance. Do whatever you want, dude. Nothing's falling out of those pox, dude. You know what I'm saying, dude? Legit, dude. I'm sleeping in a pair, too. I got the originals. I like wearing the ones to show off my quads a little bit because I feel sexy when the you know top of my quads are showing. I like to wear those ones outside, but... I sleep in the more classic basketball, uh, modern basketball player length one. Uh, I game and then I play Xbox. I keep a set of extra batteries in there, dude. And those batteries don't fall out of my pockets. I can guarantee my dog's not going to chew on them. It makes me feel safe while gaming with my bros. So I'm wearing them inside. I'm wearing them outside, dude. I'm wearing them in the bed, dude. So fire it up on these puppies, dude. Do yourself, Give yourself a treat, dude, because listeners get of the pod get 15% off when supplies last, and they're going fast, dude. Sick rhyme. Go to keepathletics.com slash dank15. They're spelled K-E-A-P. Keepathletics.com slash dank15 for 15% off your first order. Keep gives you free shipping, returns, exchanges, and shipping insurance on all orders. Keep Athletics. Pockets that work. <sighs> Legit, dude. All right, dude. So you have this mobster era... Basically, you know, I mentioned earlier that um, it sort of gives way because in 66, the, the beginning of the end of the mobster grip with that law change and the RICO Act. Um, but in 66, Howard Hughes checks into a penthouse at the Desert Inn and never left. He was weird. I worked at the Beverly Hills Hotel, and uh, he wanted to never leave that hotel either. He tried to buy it, but they wouldn't do it. And they used to have to, one of the bellmen said they'd tie like a little to-go box. He'd get like roast beef sandwiches every day. And he tie they tie it to a string and he'd w- bring it up the string into his room through the window. Like just never left, dude. Um, but in Vegas, he bought the hotel, um, three hundred million dollar worth, uh, th- ushering in an era in which the mob interests were dis- displaced by corporate conglomerates, dude. So I mentioned this Hollywood dude, and you know Hughes was a little bigger than Hollywood, but he had his toes in. The, I guess he had his toes in in sort of a. Uh, all sorts of, rather than pools, sands. Um, and and then in 1989, longtime casino developer Steve Wynn opened the Mirage, the city's first mega resort. And then over the next two decades, the strips transformed again and again. Old casinos are dynamited to make room for complexes. Um, these big, big mega resorts. In fact, Resort World's open, opening up soon. I'm going to be cruising out there. Um and it's kind of crazy, speaking of dynamiting stuff, you can imagine seeing that. Nevada was also a test site um, during the Cold War era where like over 100 nuclear bombs were detonated above ground between 1951 and 63. So you could just be posting up, thinking your days, you know, you just bombed at the tables and look up and see a mushroom cloud visible from the strip, your hotel room in a high rise. And the city, actually Vegas, was called the Up and Adam City for a while. Good trivia right there. It's a friggin' dank, dude. So now we're in the mega resort era, corporations, um, you know, there is still crime going on, obviously, you know, around town, you know, Fremont Street, dude, pickpockets, not if you're wearing keeps, and just legit stuff, uh, you know, unlegitimate stuff going on, you know, when people are just trying to be legit and have a freaking dank time and cut loose and get a little nasty in Vegas, dude, get a little dirty, get a little wild, dude. 
Um, but now it's like, you know, people like pulling computer hacking and ripoffs like that. Who's in on it? Who knows? Corporations. Are corporations the new mafia, Aaron? I mean, it's hard to say. I feel like it's more, uh, they're all owned by individuals and billionaires. I think the money is insane compared to the mob. Oh, yeah. It's way more. Yeah. It's nuts. I don't know if there's respect amongst them the way there was against like the the families, the mob. Yeah, you didn't get no messed with another guy's turf. Corporations, it's all like bottom line. Like if it, if the numbers add up and you and it's just like, look, don't you see it? Here it is. This is why it's not personal. It's business, you know. But it's always personal there. Yeah, it's always a little bit personal. But now let's get into some personal stuff with some questions, dude. Before we head on out, dude. Um, this is entitled Workout Dilemma, dude. Or oh, before we do that, Aaron, anything to add on Vegas? Any insights? Anything dank? Any mob stuff that I might have missed out on? Any major players here? Uh, I mean, did you mention the Rat Pack at all? Yeah, I mean, that was the Vegas era. They were there, like, the opening day at Flamingo. I didn't quite mention it, but, yeah, that was, like, the, you know, you had your, your big show eras, Frank Sinatra, the boys. Yeah. I've probably been less than 10 times, but somewhere up there. Still single digits, I think. It's fun. In 1954, like, 8 million people went and visited that. I mean, even... Um, during the financial crisis in 2007, the city like still had millions of visitors. Money was up. The, really, the only thing that ever shut it down was this pandemic. Yeah, like being in close proximity. I was just there. I mean, dude, there's so much walking when you're in Vegas. I mean, granted, every, they make sure it's, they make it easy for you and sell you stuff the whole time you're walking. It's all inside, air conditioned. Do they pump like dank ass like vanilla lavender scents when you're in the casinos? Yeah. They do like focus groups on that shit. It like makes you happier, dude. And horny. Vegas is horny. Vegas is the first place I saw live in the flesh boo. Not in a strip club. Just out. Just someone hammered outside. No, no. It was. It was a. Uh, I went with a, a buddy and his cousin, and she was like older. She was like maybe sixteen. And we were like twelve. You know, she was kind of changing. I don't know. She was like checking herself out in the pool or something, and I was just like, whoa. It's gnarly. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. I went to the pool at the Venetian, and you know they wanted to do like European style, and there's a topless pool there. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, legit. Yeah, I bet it. I bet it's legit. Like way better than any like nude beach you find here. In oh yeah, dude. I went to school coast. at UC San Diego. You go to the nude beach, it's just old dudes with their dinks out. Yeah, that's all it is. Dude. There's never, and you know all the college kids there. Every college freshman goes to nude beach at Blacks. And the Blacks actually has a sick ass wave. It's called Blacks because the tar in the sand there, and it's you go there and it's just yeah old dudes with their dudes out yeah um all right dude we got workout dilemma friggin what up from north shore of oahu i've been a big fan of going deep since the beginning of the demic and recently started listening to history's dank while i work love that dude get it done it always gets me stoked and gets me through the day anyway i come to you for wisdom and advice some of my dogs work out regularly and are getting jacked i also uh hear you talk about how working out boosts your stoke. I feel like I should start working out, but don't know where to be, where to start. I'm an, act, I'm an active dude, but have never had a regular workout routine other than shredding on the daily. I never can find motivation or time. My town also has no gym, and I have no workout equipment. What are some workouts that you can suggest for people with no equipment, and how can how can I motivate myself to work out? Thanks for helping. Late. What up? Uh, oh, that's the next one. Um, dude, great question. First of all, I mentioned 15 with Osteen. Don't want to push... Uh, you know, my own stuff here, but um, check it out. There's no equipment workouts on there. I would say, dude, hit workouts are great. That's high intensity interval training. You do not need weight. Start on YouTube. Just go type in hit workout, no weight. Watch the videos. They're fun. They're a few minutes. And then, you know, after you do a few of those, you'll memorize what you like and want to do. Um, but like, dude, it, it's fun, man. You just build in a little bit to your work day. I always like to tack it in like, all right, well, I'm, before I eat dinner, I'm going to go work out or like, if you're working from home or lunch or if you're a morning person, get after it. But I'm not. I like, to, I like my Zs, dude. Um, but, you know, you got to lift those LBs too, dude. So make those gains, bro. So definitely get working out. I love that you're shredding. I mean, surfing is a great workout. But definitely compliment that, dude. You're going to want to work up the rig. You're going to want to chisel it up. You're going to want to put on some bulk. So, I mean, definitely start. Learn the moves without any um, equipment. You know, use the equipment. You can set yourself up to get hurt, especially if you're going too heavy. But learn all the movements. As you do, the muscles will start to 
adjust and then add some weight from there. It's all the same shit, but just, you know, you add a little bit of weight. You can do it. I still do body weight workouts today. I mix it up sometimes, you know, some days I just want to get moving and, and then get yourself on three days a week to start, dude. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, do that, get after it full body every time. You know, don't, don't mix it up. Like, oh, I'm going to do arms and back that day. You might have some bros who are trying to bulk up like that. I just recommend you do the hit interval training work exercises, uh, type that into YouTube, 30 minutes, whatever you want. There's tons of it. You know, you want to go an hour, do an hour if you're really feeling it. Um, and just start with that. You'll hit the whole body. You'll get a nice sweat going to freaking. That's that's where I suggest you start. Aaron, you got any tips? I mean, I also say uh, watch uh, reruns of Locked Up. Uh, you'll uh, you'll see some working out there. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great call. Stuff. It's a great yeah, definitely some body weight stuff for sure in there, dude. Uh, yeah, that's the move. That's the move, dude. It's fun, dude. It's it's great to have a gym, but honestly, dude, I'm not like jonesing to go back to the gym after the de- after the freaking demi, dude. I'm like, bro, I'll stay at home, keep lifting my dumbbells around, pet my dog, dude. Tell him you know have to tell him to stop licking me when I'm working out. It's fine. Don't have to go. Don't have to drive, park, get protein shakes, make them at home. It's legit. All right, dude. What up, Strider? This is Nate, bro. Just want to say, huge fan of the podcast. Really getting insights and dank knowledge. So much better than my history class. What up? That's exactly right, dude. Was wondering if you could do an ep on aliens and supernatural phenomenon, ghosts, Bigfoot, and whatnot. Uh, I don't know how much this falls into history category, but would fire me up to learn about it and get your wisdom. If you can't do a full ep, I'd love to know your thoughts about aliens and whether or not you think they're real. Stay stoked, Nate. Yeah, dude. I absolutely think there's aliens, dude. I'm calling it. I called it 2021 back in January. This is the year, dude. Look at the universe. There's so much out there, dude. There's... All the Earth is is a freaking rock close to a star. There's going to be this Goldilocks condition somewhere else out there, dude. Come on, bro. Aaron, what do you think? Yeah, they're definitely out there. Have they been here? I don't know. But they definitely are out there. That's Yeah, that's another thing. Exactly. Like, do I think there's a government cover-up? I don't know about all that type of stuff. But I'll tell you, I do think there's no question there are alternative art life forms. There's a theory that humans came from Mars, that, you know, a, a asteroid hit Mars, debris from Mars, amoebas on there, flew out on our Martian rock, landed on Earth, the system evolved over here over, you know, millions of years in freaking, you know, amino acid pools, and then boom, here we are, dude. I like to think about amoebas boning, that's tight, dude. Maybe it was even in Vegas area, wherever that was on Pangea way, way back in the day, dude. <laughs> So, but yeah, dude, no question, bro. And I think I could find some, maybe I could do the history of Area 51. That'd be kind of fun, conspiratorial, and just find out the deal with it, you know? Sure, sure. Could be kind of fun. Maybe try to get an expert on here, too. Um, maybe some dude who was abducted. Did you ever watch Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Aaron? No, I never did. You know, I watched it. It's very much a book. I could see how the book is good. But the movie is just kind of like a lot of the humor just misses for me. And it's very like, um, it's like one of those things where like a dude from Harvard's being silly and I'm the whole time I'm like, shut up. <laughs> but it's good. I, I, I did like it. Great cast. Um, but a lot of it misses. Um, so who's, is it Steve Coogan in that? Not Steve Coogan. It's um, most deaf is in it, right? Most deaf's in it. Who's the dude? Is he the dude from The Hobbit? Is, I recognize the actor. This had to be his breakout role. It's Zoe Deschanel, Sam Rockwell, the dad from um, another... What's that other Dom Wall Gleason movie that I freaking cried during the good dad movie? Oh, About Time. Yeah, About Time. Who's the dad in that movie? The British actor? Bill Nye. Yeah, Bill Nye's in it. Oh, yeah, Martin Freeman. That's right. Martin Freeman. Is he in The Hobbit? Yeah, he is. He's Bilbo. Yeah, yeah Bilbo. So, yeah, this is probably his breakout. Kind of lose me with the Zoe Deschanel, though. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I'm not a fan. But the writing makes sense for it where she's like this. She's like, I just want to travel all the time. I'm like, I believe that that's... The characters in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy are not well thought out. It's more of a cerebral premise-based movie, so just know that. Like, most deaf is character is like, you're like, you don't know why he makes the decisions he does. Um, anyway, dude, yeah, fired up on Aliens, dude. Big time fired up on that. Mars Attacks, I mentioned, also another Vegas movie. Um... And so does Independence Day. It takes a little bit on Vegas. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. That's, that's Big time. Uh, Strider, what up? My uh, Last one. My name is Tanner, and I'm six foot seven with a small penis. I can dunk, and I love playing bass. I think these things make up for the fact that I have a small penis. 
I've boned a handful of nice ladies, but I'll be, they ditch me because of my dank. What can I do differently to get a dank GF like you? Also, I don't uh, know it. This I don't know if this is a big deal, but I do carry a pistol on me a lot. I'm from West Texas, so it's not that weird, but I do. Ladies have mentioned they don't like that, though. Just being honest, late Tanner. <laughs> yeah, dude. Guns are scary. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the gun, dude. I think it's the fact that you would... I mean, the fact that you have a small penis at 6'7 is going to definitely augment that juxtaposition. I'm 6'3 with a small penis, and 6'7 is only going to be a little bit worse. It is sick that you play bass. You have interest. That's tight. You've branched out. You've developed a skill. Good. Something six to talk foot, about. Six foot seven inch bass player. Like That's Nirvana. Yeah, dude, exactly. You got to get in a band is what I think. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess West Texas culture, maybe people carry pistols out there. But even then, I imagine it's like an old dude. You sound like you're maybe a young guy. You've only been a handful of ladies. It's like, um, I shouldn't say only, you know, only have to have one, whatever. Sorry. But uh, in any case, he has the pistol, bro. It's the gun, dude. You going on a date, dude? What are you, what are you doing? Hey, yeah, let's go to get some... Uh, I want to go to Chipotle, but uh, they won't let me take my gun, so now we got to go to this bar instead. The girl's like, okay, uh, sounds cool, fun. Let's go to this bar where everyone has guns. But then again, maybe you meet a girl who she's into guns, and then you guys are just a gun couple, you know, in you West know. Texas. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe never change. Or uh, switch to an ankle holster, you know? No one, no one needs to see it, but you know you got it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's what you got to do. You know? Yeah, don't wear it around the hip. Is that people know, you know, hey. And then also if someone's like, hey, can you not that carry that here or like wherever? Like plan a date, you know, be be flexible. You know what I mean? Doesn't mean you're betraying yourself or your principles if you're, if you're being uh, considerate of others. Right? I wish it wasn't West Texas because I feel like that's going to be so hot. But I was like, wear a jacket with one of those sweet holsters that'd be sick like cops or uh you know detectives wear i always wanted one of those i would yeah. i want to be a detective just to have that type of holster oh, yeah me too it's so sick like in the secret service just to have that and an earpiece yeah it's fun but then i wore an earpiece peeing and they suck yeah, yeah yeah but maybe i'd like it if i had an earpiece if i had the holster and i would put my walkie-talkie in there that'd be sick Anyway, dude, that's my advice, dude. Other than that, keep playing bass, bass, keep raging, dude. Learn some licks, listen to some Fishbone. They've got some good bass, bass riffs, dude. Um, and hey, you, you did say you're getting laid. So, like, yeah. you know, look on the bright side. Yeah, dude. You're, you're going you're gonna to be fine, dude. Maybe you work from home. You won't have to carry And if you do carry the pistol, you'll be fine. You might not have to carry it around so much. But yeah, you can't be going to, like, a movies or something. I mean, I guess you can, but I don't know, dude. Just sounds intimidating would you like it i don't know if, it, if actually i wanted a date and a lady had a pistol on her hip i'd be like that's kind of cool for about two minutes yeah that's cool yeah that's true then i'd be like hey can you maybe on the next date can you not and then they're like hey i always wear this and then maybe he's like trying to bone he's like i gotta get butt naked but only keep my <laughs> pistol on <laughs> sorry i have a license for the, i have a permit i'm gonna use it always she's like yeah i get it but it kind of is just like it's not really working I no. uh, I did go on a first date with a girl who showed me she had a giant knife in her purse. You know, in case in case I was a creep or something. Right. But uh, yeah, that should have been that sh that's a red flag. I should have seen big time. <laughs> hey, nice to meet you. I have a knife. Don't weird me out. I'll slit your throat. Yeah. Okay. Trust issues. Yeah. Yeah, pepper spray, dude. Something like that, small, and then don't show me a knife. That's your weapon. You <laughs> freaking knife, dude. Amazing. All right, dude. That's freaking it. Vegas, baby. Vegas. I'm going back in a few weeks. I always go. It's my home away from home. Although I hate how my throat feels when I'm there because it's freaking so dry. Um, fired up, dude, on this brief history. A little mob-centric, but uh, just try to get you through it, dude. Paint a nice, fun picture, dude. Fired up, dude. Dude's got to cut loose. It's a city built on horniness, dude. That's the intangible of infrastructure. Horniness, dude. Um, all right, dude. Stay legit. Stay stoked. Email me, questions, comments, concerns, corrections. More Vegas info would be tight, dude. You can share it on any other pods, too. Um, Stratowilsontrez at gmail.com, dude. All right, dude. Thanks, Aaron, dude. Yeah. Love it, dude.